And when he had given thanks, he prayed. It. And he said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be given to the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, not the person beside you, not the person in front of you or behind you. Let a man examine himself, himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. I want you right now, just stretch forth your hands this way. I want you to talk to the Lord. Point here to the altar, not to leave it to the altar. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, that everything that we are, everything that we ever will be, comes from you. Lord, we love you, and we thank you. We thank you for this day, Lord, and to be any attitude, any actions within us that is not satisfied from you, Lord. Take them right now. We lay them on the honor to you. They're yours. In you, we are complete. Without you, we're never complete. I ask you right now, Lord, to show us. Help us stay in that better way. We love you, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, you're awesome.
Wow. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, walk around a little bit. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them again. For anybody that's been trying to get a hold of me, I can tell you, if you text me over since, if you text me since the last, in the last week until today and I haven't responded, it's because I can't see you. Uh, I was trying to do a good deed and war put water in a uh, bird bath for the little birdies because it was so hot. I had this sitting over where nobody could get in the way because I could touch it. And I, I was through, and I go and put this in my pocket, and then I said, you know what, I forgot to water the birds. So I get in the bucket, and my, I'm trying to keep my dog from getting in the way. So I said, back up, Maddie, and I put the bucket over the fence like this, and when I do, my phone goes, click. <laughs> and so I pulled it out, it was looking, then, then of course the thing says put it in kitty litter. I don't have a cat, so I had to go dig some up out in the backyard. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I went and got some kitty litter, put it in kitty litter, and said for 24 to 48 hours, pulled it out. It was actually was in great shape, except for one thing. I couldn't see it. So, uh, between going to Greenville and trying to get it all fixed up, I finally ordered one. It'll be here in a day or two. So, uh, because my phone, I thought my phone was pretty awesome. Obviously, nobody else does. <laughs> makes you feel, makes you feel like you're getting to be old when your phone doesn't even make parts for your phone anymore. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, so if you've been trying to get a hold of me, I'm not not talking to you, and I'm not uh, what do you call it, disking you. It's just that I don't know. So if you call, the only way you get me is to either call the church or call Linda, and the church or Linda will get it to me, or you can email me because I keep checking my emails. DC and I've been. Conversing through emails. So, if you got it, and, and through uh, Linda's phone. So, if you need to get a hold of me, and I'll let you know, I'll try to see. That's why there's no been no Mighty Army. Because Mighty Army can't see where it's going. <laughs> and so, so uh, coming up, uh, matter of fact, when you see Mighty Army, you'll know that we're back in business. Okay, that'd be your little hint. Mighty Army, back in business. Uh, and of course, it made me upgrade, but I still got one, I reckon. <laughs> As I went from a Ford, I think it's Note 10 now, and I had a Note 4, and they upgraded me to a Note 5 only because they don't make Note 4s anymore, and, and they said, you sure you want to go to the Note 5? And I said, well, I just want to do whatever it's got to do to get it fixed, and they said, well, you got to get to the Note 5. I said, all right, so here we go. So if you haven't got me, that's why I have not, not been asked you on purpose, it's because I don't see what you're doing. I don't hear what you're doing. You have no idea. Amen? But the birdies did get some water. But the birds got water. <laughs> the birds got water. Amen. That's good. <laughs> I, I read a story the other day. It was very, very enlightened. Now, this is the last day. The last day of focus. It's part six, but I asked for so many things in here. And you say, why do you keep doing this? Well, I actually was going to do it in one service. I realized one service is not enough. And then it hit me. Because negative takes up so much space in your brain. One negative thought is heavier, is so heavy, that it takes seven positives to overcome one negative. Did you know that? I've told you that so many times. If you haven't heard that, know that now. It takes seven plus positives to overcome one negative. So you got to be careful when you're talking to people. Because you, you, can, you can say, you can be arguing or discussing with your children or your wife or your or husband. <coughs> and you throw out one negative, but you're going to throw out a couple of positives, <coughs> and all they hear is that negative. Why? Negative weighs so much more. It gets in there. It's like, it's like throwing a big old rock in the pond. <laughs> it's going straight down, and the rest of you are throwing floats. They're all floating up on top of that, that rock's going down. So that's why I've been banging on this so hard is because we have had, we, the church, if you look at it in one way, the church has suffered major losses since November. Sister Kathleen, Sister Mary, Bethany, Brother Billy, Sister Dorothy, plus family members of, of us in here. My brother-in-law died of cancer. One week in the long ago, I preached three cancer funerals in 24 hours. 
Okay, it's just constant. You know, I did two on Saturday and one on Sunday and preached here too. So it's just constant. Uh, people are, are suffering from loss everywhere. So it's important, so important, that we look in our own personal lives, we suffer loss. As a church, we have suffered loss, people that we knew. But we got to keep our focus because we keep our focus, we'll understand what's going on. That's why I keep putting rebuild mode uh, uh, down there. I, I did hear this story. Uh, a guy hears a knock at the door. <clears throat> this is a new book, by the way. <clears throat> I threw the other way. I even burned it and buried it. The dog drug it up and went really and closed it back up and buried it again. A guy hears a knock at the door. He opens it to find a snail. He picks the snail up and throws it across the street. Five years go by, one day he hears a knock at the door and opens it to see, see that snail again. The snail says, well, what was that all about? <laughs> Y'all come on down. Yeah. They, they had me chucking all down really deep down. Said, okay, well, I'm the only one to chuck with a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. okay. The gray, the, all the gray-headed ones were chucking. Okay, here we go. So throw that book away too. All right. Here we go. Uh, uh, get your Bible out. We're going to read this. Get your, get your Bible. Philippians chapter 3. Stand for the reading of the word. I'm going over all ten of them. The first eight I'm going to go through quickly. And then we're going to go through the last two. These are ways to refocus your mind. Do you know, literally, and this is why people stay in sadness and why people cannot break cycles in their life. People get caught up in a grieving cycle or they get caught up in some kind of other kind of cycle, an abuse cycle or uh, uh, abusing substances or, or whatever. They get in these cycles and they can't get out of these cycles. And the reason is your brain only uses what it knows. So if your brain only uses what it knows and it uses, when it comes to information, it uses the, most, the information that's given by the person with the most, in their mind, the most authority. So, uh, if a dad or a mother told you something years ago, or a grandmama or a granddaddy, that's something that got planted in you, and they were people of authority, and you come up thinking these things over and over and over again. Somebody's else come along, and they, and they tell you things, but it really doesn't stick, because they don't have the same authority that your mom or your dad had, or your grandmama or granddaddy, or whoever it was, your school teacher, uh, the policeman. And so, these things play in your mind, and so, Although you get different types of events in your life, you still go back. Your mind automatically goes back to what only what it knows. So that's why this is here. That's why we're doing this keeping your focus. Because if it takes seven positives to overcome one negative, then we're going to, we've done ten positives. Ten positives that will well overcome the negative uh, uh, in our heart. Plus it gives us a chance to relearn. When I say relearn, some of the stuff you already know, but you kind of let it fall to the side because of loss and because of other things that happened in your life. So this is to relearn, and some of us it's to learn. But again, it is to get your mind set in a learning mode so it can overcome what it already knew. Okay? If you're prone to get up in the morning and say, you know, there's two ways you get up in the morning. You get up in the morning and go, good Lord, it's morning. Or you get up go, uh, uh, good morning, Lord. Which one do you know with it? <laughs> yeah, do you get to go, good morning, Lord, or good Lord is morning? Okay, we want everybody to get in this. This is to help you get in that. Good, good Lord, it's, I mean, uh, 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 good morning, Lord. It's Sunday morning. I get to go to church. I get to have fun in you today, and then what I learn, I get to take with me all week long. Lord, I thank you for that because there's people all over the world that would give, literally give their right arm to hear what we're hearing. Literally. Literally. So here we go. Philippians. Of course, I'm in Ephesians. Praise God. So if I start reading Ephesians chapter 3, it's going to mess you up. Here it goes. Philippians chapter 3. Brother, I count on myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark. I give it all I've got. I give everything within me to push to the prize 
of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's, let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, you're alive and well. I know, God, you're on the throne. I ask you, God, right now, Lord, to minister God the way only you can. Touch and anoint. Have your will and your way. I know, God, there's absolutely nothing in our life that you can't help us overcome. There's nothing in our life that you can't help us deal with. And I thank you for that. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister to us and through us in a very powerful, powerful way. In the name of Jesus, we give this day unto you. And God, y'all say this with me. God, help me. Replace the negative, Replace the negative. In, my life in my life today, today. with overcoming, overcoming. Overwhelming, overwhelming, positives found in your word. I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. Well, wait down, say, look at somebody said say, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be the impossible. Praise God. So here we go. We're going to go over We're gonna go over every last one of them, but we're going to stop when we get to 9 and 10. Over the next week or so, I'm still asking God to show me, but uh, uh, talking about learning and relearning, uh, over the next few weeks, I believe we're going to do a, a series of nothing else, one service or maybe two, about misconceptions about loss. And misconceptions about how you handle loss. And so we're going to talk about it, and, and, and I'm not sure exactly, it could be next week, it could be the week after, the week after, but that's getting ready to come up. And that's to help us focus. This is all about focus. Also, we're going to talk about focusing on the battle. So the next few weeks, we're going to be focusing on the battle, and it's going to be focusing on how to get beyond loss. And in Three weeks from now, because it will be this Tuesday and next Tuesday, in three Tuesdays from now, we're going to have Live, Live Now, Live Strong, and it's going to be on Tuesday nights, and I'm not sure how long it's going to last because it's still in developmental stages, but it's going to be cool because it helps you get past, listen carefully, it'll help you get past doubts, it'll help you get past your past, it'll help you get past depression. It's not a cure-all, but it'll help. Depression, it helps you get past past pain. It even helps you get past pain that you're experiencing right now, whether it's chronic pain. And when I say chronic pain, sometimes it's physical and sometimes it's emotional. But whether it's chronic pain, this will help. So it's really important you get a chance. Come be with us on Tuesday night. So this is going to be some good, good stuff. And get your friends. If you know people that, that are having problems with, with depression or problems with, with, with pain of any type, you get them here because this is going to really really be something. Amen? Okay, so how many how many positive said take to overcome one negative? At least as many. Seven. It's, it's awesome. It's God's number seven. Isn't that cool? Alright, so here we go. Rebuild mode. We're just gonna we're just gonna just go through the slides we went through the last few weeks because it's been a holiday season and, and all this stuff and so we've, we've had we've been we've, we've not everybody's been here every week, so this, that's why I'm leaving it here because I want everybody to get this down deep inside. It's got to get deep inside because we can have it here, but not have it here. And guess what? We got problems. We can have it here, but it never gets here until it gets here. Okay? So here we go. Get ready. God uses, uh, uses the rebuild mode. We're in the rebuild mode. I look out right now. Some days I look out and it just, sometimes it saddens me and sometimes it excites me. The reason why is uh, I look out and think about where, 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 where some of our people were strategically always planted and, and, and the way they enhanced the, the services and the way they enhanced our church and did things in our church. And, and I noticed as, as people started going out, others were coming in. And so, so, so God was replacing, not replacing that person but replacing a need, not the person. You can never replace that person. There won't be one, Brother Billy. Amen. That's right. There won't be one, Sister Dorothy. There won't be one, uh, Sister Kathleen. There won't be one, Sister Mary. 
She's in heaven right now making 10 layer angel food cakes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And there won't be one Bethany. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And so, so, so God, he's not replacing them, but he's replacing the need. The need. You're just the need. Okay? And some of us have the answer to needs, but we don't know it yet. Because we haven't allowed God. Here it is. In the rebuild mode, it takes us out of complacency and takes us out of collapse mode where we're not being used and we're not doing anything and draws out of us freshness. And it helps us to move further. So, so, and again, our focus. Satan don't want you to realize this. Our, 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 when we focus, we've got so much potential. We've got so much power. But it puts us in a position that God can do something very, very powerful. Well, when, when the 12 spies went over to the promised land, Joshua and Caleb, they came back. Their focus was on God's promise. And when they come back and said, we're, we're, look at what we got coming. Look at these grapes. They're so big you got to be held between two guys. But the 10 spies, they focused on the problem. Now, in your life, if you're focusing on the problems, you're going to be like the 10 spies. You know, you'll never step into your promised land because you're too busy focusing on the problem. But Joshua and Caleb focused on the promise and the ten spies never made it in, but Joshua and Caleb, they made it in. None of them make it in, but Caleb at 85 years old took a mountain of giants. Why? Isn't it awesome? Because he refused to focus on the problem. He focused on the promise. Today, the, pro the problem is negative. Negative, negative, negative. That's why God's got us in rebuild mode. But we've got so many positives to look forward to. And we're getting ready to talk about them. Ten. we got ten pauses we're going to do. Ready? Here it is real quickly. I'm not only going to camp out. I'm just going to read it to you until we get to the others. All right? And some of y'all say, well, I've heard this two or three times. Good. How many ever watch TV Land? TV Land? I love TV Land. How many watch BTV? You know, Linda, I'll be looking at it. She'll go, you know, the girl pals on. she goes, ah. Can we look at something else? I said, well, I reckon so, because this is a rerun. <laughs> Everything on BTV, I've probably seen it 25. I've seen so many episodes of Gunsmoke. I've seen every episode. And uh, uh, certain channels don't have all of them, but the ones they have on certain channels on Inspiration uh, Network, I've seen every Gunsmoke episode they had. There's only a couple of seasons that they, they showed. Uh, but again, even though it's reruns, I still like watching them. And guess who's on 365 or on, on this pressure network? This book. It is Duke Days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw El Dorado last night. I thought it was something I couldn't take my eyes off of. But guess how many times I've seen it? <laughs> I can't even count. That high. But I'll take my shoes off. But still, it is so good and inspirational. I love watching the Duke. Okay, so now here we are. You say, I've already seen, I've already seen this two or three Sundays. Guess what? Just imagine this. Just imagine it's one of those shows you like so good that you don't care if you've seen it before and before and again and again and again. Ready? So here we go. Number one, get ready. Number one, real quick. You ain't got good. Okay, number one, he's called you. It wasn't to get you to this place in your life to drop you. God does not plan on dropping you right now. Amen? Even if you feel like everything's sinking around you, remember, it's not the water outside the boat that sinks the boat. It's when the water gets inside the boat that the boat sinks. Amen? The problems around you can't sink you, but it's when you allow the problems to get in here, that's when you get sunk. Amen? When you get the negative right here, that's why it sinks you. No matter how much water is around you, the boat is not going to sink. It's the water. Look, all it takes is a little bit of water on the inside. Look at the Titanic. So, 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 so here we go. God has not called you here to drop you. I am convinced and sure this very thing that he which began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Number two, he's going to build his church. He uses us. We are his little carpenter bees and we are his little doobies. Remember that? Rob Peru, I see the 
got the doobies. I used to be so, it used to be cool back when I was a little boy. We didn't have all the stuff they got now on television. You had to watch something every now and then. And, and I used to like to watch Romper Room and all that stuff and see the doobies. Y'all remember that? I know just a couple of us. Y'all missed out on so much. Okay. He's going to build this church. I tell you, you are Peter, a Petros, a large piece of rock, and on this rock, a uh, Petra, a huge piece of rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church, and the gates of hell, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it, or be strong to its detriment, or hold out against it. Now, oh, this is good stuff. Are you ready? Number three. He did not promise to deliver you from the fire, but to walk with you through it. That's our protection in his presence. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine, when thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee, and when through the rivers, there shall not overflow thee. Thou, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall a flame kindle upon you. And number four, there's more in store for you. This isn't it. Yes, we come to the sour parts in our life. How many remember this? How many remember that Sunday that I brought all the I brought the oven and I had the oven up here and I had these I said, how many like sugar cookies? And everybody raised their hand. And I said, how many want one? And people started raising their hands, so I walked down the aisle and started throwing bags at them. They thought they were getting sugar cookies. They were getting ingredients. Some got sugar, some got flour. Some got good stuff, some got sour stuff. And they said, we can't eat this. I said, no, we can't eat it. But when you put it together, look what happens. Our life, when God puts it together, all things work together for the good of them are called the Lord. When he puts it all together, that's when the good stuff comes out. Amen? So we're going to learn right along. Somebody say, here we go. All right? All right. When we obey the voice of God, we are unstoppable. We obey the voice of God, we are unstoppable. That's why Satan wants to keep the word out of our mouth. He'd rather speak about the problem than the promise. God's word is the promise. So my words shall go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, without producing any effect or useless. It shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the very thing I send. Isaiah 55, 11. Number six. Have courage, be strong, don't back down, or give in to Satan or his plan. Stand. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Number seven, I love this. God is greater than your ups and your downs. Y'all say that. God is greater than your ups and your downs. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Go out and figure out something like that. God is greater than your ups and your downs. God is greater than your ups and downs. I see y'all in it today, ain't you? Okay, here we go. Look, I'm playing with y'all. Look, God didn't call you because of your greatness, but he is. He's still great at times that you might not feel like it. Amen? Number eight, this problem is not going to destroy you. Amen? You just keep on standing. God's got this. Amen? Here we go. Here's our last ones. Ready? I love this. Y'all say this with me. He made you unique for a reason. Here's what, I'll start right there. This is one of these itty corny ones. You know how you catch a unique bird? You unique up on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he gets with it every now and then because I'll forget it. <laughs> Amen. Ready? Again. He made you unique for a reason. You matter. Wow. He made you unique for a reason. You matter. You have a purpose, a kingdom purpose that only you can fulfill. Amen. We're going to do it again, but now let's say he made me. Y'all put me in there instead of you, me. He made me unique for a reason. I matter. I have a purpose, a kingdom purpose that only I can fulfill. Isn't that awesome? Amen. So now watch this. Here it is. Stop comparing yourself to others. I have twin brothers. They look so much alike. They're identical. They're three minutes apart. They look so much alike. When their daughters were small, their daughters got them confused. All they got to do is start talking, and I know the difference. All they got to do is start doing something, and I know the difference. You know why? Even though they look alike, they are so unique. 
One wants to be, one wants to be riding bikes and fixing cars, and one wants to be, be, be doing artwork and doing stuff like that. One, 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 one dresses like this, the other one's dressed up like he's going, going to go to GQ. Like I told somebody the other day, I told about my brother, I said, he looked like he just stepped out of GQ, and I looked like I just stepped out of DQ. <laughs> Same, the same God who called these others empowers you. The same God that called these others that you look up to empowered you to do something for him also. Stand up. Don't be afraid that you're different. Do you know that people don't, people are, are, are people that stick out, people that make a difference are those that aren't like everybody else. If you're going to make a difference, you can't be like everybody else. You can't be talking the same and being the same. There's got to be something different about you. That's what people are attracted to is your differences. Amen. When they're looking for some way to get something done. Amen. So here it is. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Psalm 139 and 14. New Living Translation. Y'all say that together with me because this is, this is a prayer. Thank you for making me wonderfully. Okay, I'm hearing you now. You ready? Thank you for making me wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Psalm 139. For, watch this. For he who motivated and fitted Peter and worked effectively through him for the mission to the circumcised motivated and fitted me. To hear, motivated and fitted means, number one, motivated is on the inside, getting me going. Fitted is something on the outside. Fitted is something, your, your talents. So motivation is your attitude. And when you're fitted, that is your talents and the things God's given you. There's that, I can, anybody I get around, anybody I get around, I always go with this thought. I can learn something from them today. What can I learn from them today? Amen? Anybody I get around, I know there's going to be something different about them. Anybody. There's nobody on this earth that you can't learn from. Amen? So, so, so watch this. And work through me also for the mission to the Gentiles. Stop, look at somebody and say, stop comparing yourself to others. Look at them. Tell them. You know, back in the day, I remember certain evangelists would come to and I want to be, man, I love the way he does that. I wish I could do that. And the Lord said, but that's, that's not you. you got to be you. If you're trying to be somebody else, guess what? You can't be somebody else. But you know what? I can be the best me. I can be a better me than you can. With the exception of the Emmaus walk in D.C. When D.C. did my, when D.C. imitated me at the Emmaus walk. We are in the mass walk, and they said, here's Junior. And I, they, I didn't know that they had broke into my cabin and took my clothes and gave them to D.C. And then they put powder all over his hair so he'd be white-headed. And he walked in and said, you're looking good, you're looking good. I know you can't help it. And then he started doing it. He walked like me and he started shaking hands and doing stuff. And he had me so, uh, somebody told me he was a better me than I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest thing. It was the funniest skit ever since I've been going to mass all these years. That was the funniest skit I've ever seen. All right. So stop comparing yourself to others. What God empowered them to do, you may not even consider doing. Amen? Number nine. Number ten. Here's the whole armor of God. Amen? Y'all, can y'all see that? Can y'all read that? Okay, here we go. Let's right here to do it. Be strong in the Lord, y'all say it with me, in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Together. Oh, y'all can't say okay. Okay, that makes sense then. Okay, I look then. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You're going to see that again soon. Amen. God is awesome. So watch this. I love this. Man, I love this. This is what I had to, this is something that once I got to this, 
It changed my life. It changed my ministry. I'm getting ready to show you. Y'all ready? Yeah. How many ready for some change? Yeah. You ready to get up and let God just do something powerful in your life? Get ready. Get ready. Stop praying. I should have put gist. Stop praying for protection or just protection. Because still want protection <laughs> no matter what. Stop praying for protection and start praying for boldness. Wow. Let it sink in. If all we ever do is praying for protection, that's all we ever do. God protect me. God protect me. You know what you are? That you, you are in a position where you're being you're the one that's being attacked. If all you pray for is protection, you're you're putting yourself in a position to be attacked. God, I don't just need your protection. I want your boldness. Because I don't want to just lay back. I want to get out and get it done. Amen. I want to get out and get it done. That's why we go to Pit Detention Center, go to other places. Hey, I don't want to just sit back and, and, and expect God. Uh, here I am, God. Here it is. Take care of me here. No, I want to do something for God. I want to put a dent in what God is doing. Amen. Pray for boldness. How long has it been since you just didn't pray for protection, but you prayed for boldness? God, help me do what I got to do. Amen. That's powerful. Acts 4, 29, 31 says, And now, Lord, observe their threats and grant to your bond servants full freedom to declare your message fearlessly. While you stretch out your hand to cure and to perform signs and wonders through the authority and by the power of the name of your holy child and servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They continued to speak the word of God with freedom, boldness, and courage. God, I don't want to be a rocking chair Christian. I don't want to be a Sunday morning Christian. I want to be a 24-7, whenever it needs to be, whatever needs to be done, help me, God, to do what needs to be done, when it needs to be done. Not be afraid. God, help me. You know, I can think now, just about every place I go, it seems like, you know, uh, there are certain places I go, I went somewhere the other night, I, well, I, I went one night over to, when Sierra was, was, was playing at, at, at the restaurant, playing and singing, and I went to enjoy hear Sierra sing, and next thing I know, literally, I'm doing premarital counseling with a with a couple that I just ran into. And so then I backed off. So why? Wow, now I can go over here and listen to Sierra. Then I'm doing marriage counseling with somebody I just ran into. And then I walk over there and say, I'm listening to Sierra. And so I go to sit still. And then I'm doing life coaching. And I, I, and I said, Lord, I came here to stretch my legs and just chill. He said, well, go ahead. You can do this in between what I got you doing. I'm thinking, God, why is my phone messed up? You know I need that. And, and, and I'm trying to get it done. I can't get it done as quick as I'm trying to get it done. I'm going back and forth. And finally, I wind up in a, in a place in Greenville, uh, uh, in an Indian, <laughs> an, an Indian store from India, Indian store. I don't even know what I'm even looking at and stuff in there. And there's a guy from Jamaica that was going to work on my phone. And, and he got talking and he said, he said, what up, man? And I said, what up, man? He said, you got problem? I said, yeah, I do got problem, man. He said, what be your problem? I said, my phone is, my phone, you can't see my phone. He said, well, I can't either. Let me look at it. 
And he said, well, look, I, it was so funny. He goes, give it to me, give me a contact number, and I'll call you in a couple hours. I said, dude, that's my phone. <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> it was cool. This, it was fun. In the middle of all that frustration, it was fun. And so, so he decides he's going to take care of it. So he tries to take care of it. And, and he goes, he's moving, so he's got all this stuff all distributed everywhere, and he can't find it. And, and the Lord spoke to him and said, you're not here for that phone. You're here for him, and you're here for that woman behind the counter. And before I left, they were wearing, God's got this, Team Bethany. They had a devotion book. They were talking about the Lord. It was really awesome. The whole thing was just so awesome. So, so when I left, I was thinking, well, now they're excited about God, but I'm still not excited about myself. And God said, I got it, Mom. <laughs> Amen. You've got to be ready at any time for God to use you. Don't be afraid to step out. Don't be afraid to, to get in the middle of it because God's got this. Amen? Y'all say amen. 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 Ten positives. Keep those ten positive. If you, if you haven't been writing them down, you let me know. I'll make a copy of them and give you those ten positives. I'll try to put them all on one piece of paper. And you can take those ten positives and you can look at them every day. And you can think about this thing. Because as a matter of fact, I think I will. I'll make one piece of paper with the ten positives. I'll put them out there. You can get them next week. Those ten positives. Because remember, it takes seven to even start taking care of a negative. you got ten. Put the ten in and quit looking at the problem. Don't, don't deny the problem. It's there. But don't look at the problem. Focus on the promise while you're going through the problem. And you'll see a difference. DC, come on up here, buddy. Y'all stand. You have to keep your focus through the pain to get to the gains. Amen? God is so awesome. All the time. God is awesome. I'm excited about what's coming up. God's got something special for us. It's going to be so, so awesome. And remember, if you're trying to get a hold of me, until you see Mighty Army come out, you'll know that, that, that I'm still down. So you can call the church. You can email me. Or you can get away. And, and I'll get it. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. I'm in here with nobody looking around. You would raise that hand and you say, Yeah, Pastor, I, I, I'm, I definitely have got problems. Would you put that hand up? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all hands should be up. Yeah, we all got problems. Now, how many in here? be honest. You ain't got to hold them up. Just push them up and put them back down. How many in here would say until I heard this, until I was challenged by these, I had broken focus and I focused more on the problem than the promise. Just look your hand up quick like this. Quick like. I focused more on the problem than the promise. God didn't bring you here to drop you right here. God brought you here because he wants you to be an overcomer. You got to look at the promise, not the problem. The promise, not the problem. The promise, not the problem. You can see, don't, don't deny the problem, it's there. But your focus should be on the promise. When Peter walked on the water, the problem was all around him. And he did the impossible. He walked on top of the problem because he was focused on Jesus. But when he started
started doing the impossible, walking on the problem, it began to get to him and he began to look around and start focusing on the problem versus the promise and he started sinking. Some of y'all in here, that's exactly where you're at right now. You got out of the boat, you focused on Jesus, you focused on the promise, you started walking on the problem, and then once you realized what you were doing, it kind of got to you, it kind of got you in your gut. And you began to hear Satan say, you shouldn't be able to do this. This is, this is something you can't do. Why are you trying? That's why, because Jesus said, come on. Matter of fact, not only was he walking on the problem, he also was walking on the word because Jesus said come and that's when he started walking. Today is your day of renewed victory. I want y'all to pray this aloud with me. Father, I refuse to keep focused on my problem. I know it's there. I'm not denying it. But I also know you give me a promise of overcoming. I choose to put my focus on your promise, not my problem. With your help, God, I'm going to walk on top of this problem until I get to you and your promise. I thank you for everything you say, every promise in your word, because it's true. And I thank you for the specific promise you've given me for my problem. And I thank you, Lord, that I know that I know because you do not lie if I keep my focus on the promise you will help me overcome this problem in the name of Jesus I thank you for it Amen You know the hang back prayer Now you've got another need to God and you just want to come and praise him the altars are open you want to come up and just talk to him, whatever. We all prayed. We had a good response. But you still have something else you want to pray about or you want to be anointed, whatever, you're more than welcome to come. You know this anointing bomb that I keep in my pocket? It's been amazing because in the last week, walking down the street, I met a guy for the first time, and I just spoke and said, uh, you're looking good, man. How's things going? And he started talking, and all of a sudden, there goes the radar. And I stopped. I was going to my father-in-law's house and stopped. I never met this guy. We're talking. And in the next couple of minutes, <laughs> I had this out of morning him. I was in Walmart getting some groceries. And a guy came up behind me, this just a couple of days ago, and tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around, I could see it, it goes that radar. He says, pray for your brother David, start talking. He said, I got this problem, I need, I need, need some help. And I said, open your hands. Give him his hands, here's my pocket. Pull it out. I said, we ain't got to make some great big thing like we got, you know, we're, we're at, you know, Jimmy Swagger thing, just here. And anoint his hands, and anoint his head. I said, God's got this. Trust him. And I began to think about it. I was walking through the hospital to see somebody else as I'm walking through. A nurse stops me. And when she stops me, I talk to the nurse and the lady there, she, she had some kind of heart problem. And she went, oh, pray for me, Pastor, because I, and here I go again. I said, God, that's so smart of you. <laughs> Find out he's smarter than you think he is. I'm mean, anointing people everywhere, all places, hospital, Walmart, down the street. And the whole message is get your eyes off the problem and get your eyes on the promise. God's got this. Don't
Bible say it? God's got it is. Do your mind tell us they can get your eyes off the problem. They get your eyes on the promise. Amen.
meant for us to hear. And Lord, as we go through these doors, let us help others so that when they see us, they will see you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.